first question would be, as you alluded to, 10 odd years, why now? Was there a specific moment or an inspiration well, or an event? Or? I, I, I would say, to start off with, Damon and I, we had a chat and he said, look, Paul, if we don't get a producer soon, we're going to end up with another 10 years with another 40 songs. <laughs> I said, it's funny you say that because I've actually got somebody in mind. And he went, well, who? And I said, uh, Tony Visconti. And he looked at me and he went, all right, well, you get him and then we'll use him. And so it took me about a year to track him down. Really? And he came to meet us really? and we played some of the uh, stuff we've been working on. Wow. He said he'd love to get involved. So that was the spark that instigated us actually going into the studio. If you're leaving, please still say goodbye. And if you are leaving, can you leave me my silver jubilee, my, my old flag, my dark woods, my sunrise. Why did it take so long to get hold of him? I don't know, because I don't do Facebook or any of that stuff, but a friend of mine does. You, uh, know, you know people who do, though, don't you? I do. Well, I do well, now. That means you do do it. No, I've been told <laughs> he does it. So I got somebody on Facebook to contact him, because I tried the, the other routes, and that wasn't any anything that was coming through. I stand on the beach where the storms amplify all the voices that I care for, and the ghosts are home. In terms of this collection of songs, because they are they are tied together, was there a moment, something you read in the news, a certain statement? Was there anything that kind of thought, OK, this is going to uh, kick we, off? But we're, we've been friends for a long time now, actually, and uh, we, haven't, we haven't stopped thinking about this. Yeah, we'd have moments when we'd meet up. You, and you, you, you painted whole sets at one point. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's about... How many songs did you say that, that there are? Well, there was sort of probably about 40 I reckon, maybe 50 I, I reckon you could take that up to about 80 P potentially in, yeah in, in, yeah in, in, of ideas in, yes um, I mean you no know, some yeah. of these are you know very embryonic embryonic yes it's a nice word <laughs> So this has been a kind of slow, gentle rolling process for all these years, occasionally surfacing. Yeah, and occasionally we'd, we'd meet up with um, Simon Tong and Tony Allen and we'd grab whatever time we had, like a few days, just to do some recording. Uh, and that was sort of sporadic over the last 10 years, partly because we've all been doing different projects. And also, I guess, at one point, we was involved with Damon doing Plastic Beach. A few valley cries over dark ponds of Mary get on your mo what did you say mobility from the very first song from Maryland it's it's it has got this beautiful melancholic romantic straight away from the start feel to it, it bucolic bucolic is a good word other things ending in olic or ick anything with an ick on. Any, anything yeah yeah with an ick on was was there a idea that this was how the whole record was going to sound, that there was going to be this sadness and longing to it. Uh, I think that just happens naturally and organically. There was no sort of sit down, right, let's make a, a really melancholic <laughs> album, mate. Uh, it, was ju it just evolved as it did, and I think probably one thing that helped sort of stabilise us or stabilise the idea of where we were going to begin was actually going to Blackpool initially, mm. and that evolved into you going to Banbury and making a few trips around the country, really, to get an over, overall picture. But, I mean, that's, you know, you did those separate journeys yourself, mm. you know. So I suppose it's like uh, the album and the first song is like a, a letter of farewell. Be with them, because they're all disconnected and raised up in mansions and 200 plastic bags in a well stuff. So you turn to the tribe and are we green, are we pleasant, we're not. The opening sounds like a farewell. It's interesting to have a record start with a goodbye. Yes. Well, it's true. They don't normally. Because you've got a fanfare of progress as we cheer in the clowns as they roll into town. Yes. It's Their eyes look something and something to me and carry the terrible things they've seen. Yeah, it's almost... I mean, if, if, if you are bemoaning the passing of something, it's almost with pity at those responsible for it. Is that a fair estimate? Uh, yes, it's the... the I, I'd, yeah, but I'd also say it's a foreboding of what's to come as well. Yeah, yeah, but you know. but and what what I really didn't want to do with um, writing this letter was for it to become embittered at any point mm -hmm. or aggressive. I wanted it to be uh, considered and emotional and utterly from the heart. 
Where did you travel to, Dame? Well, we started off in um, in Blackpool. Uh, we went on a trip to Blackpool. Yeah, just before Christmas, so it was sort of quite... Uh, cause to, it's play, to play through lots of music. Yeah, yeah, to and work we, uh, out book, ideas. We booked out a room in the, the dance school on, on, on the, the promenade next to the tower, and we had these beautiful, huge, great... Uh, uh, sash windows and this view of the tower and the sea and you know it's really bright and a lot of wind and and you get all the seagulls kind of blown in towards the promenade and they're fighting against it but they're so they're suspended and we're playing this music and outside there's these seagulls in suspension it's just wonderful there was above us and below us there are other floors of people rehearsing yeah so, so that music came sort of drifted in and every time you went you opened the door there was there was kind of sort of Sunset Boulevard being played <laughs> yeah it's that being know. part of fame yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the class that if, you know that no one else is in it's just the <laughs> people who can't sing or dance the last people to be picked <laughs> the last people to be picked in the lineup. Uh, yes you, you, definitely you, you, the, you. the very last <laughs> that's it yeah <laughs> And then when did it expand out? Did you did you physically go to other places then after this um, to write? Yeah, then well 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 I had this big splurge of thought that came out from from that experience and um, started putting that with with some of our improvisations and chord progressions and realised that it was the way it was written seemed even though it was all very much me going Cubs make fire on the edge of the golf course move on um rape seed you know what i mean it, it it was put together like that through moving moving journeys a lot the words but i suppose because of the motion of them being physical motion being in motion when you're writing them they the, the you can the, they work really well they have a real rhythm to them anyway naturally subconsciously you're, you're working like that um so you can put quite obtuse but beautiful words together and it still feels like it's like a song written like a song which it isn't it's written more like a sort of reading a poem over music yeah so that's that's <clears throat> so that's that was the um but not all the songs but a lot of them yeah um, you could say there's an element well to my mind you know there's that sort of famous uh, i think it was wh Auden or betterman did a sort of this a recitation over some music and it might have been benjamin britain or somebody like that uh, and it was called nightmare and it's about a train traveling from houston yes exactly so, i know it yeah yeah exactly. so it's sort of along those lines yeah, to a point completely you know, exactly i mean it's, it's traveling through the country and taking in the visual and yeah. you know are you trying to tell me that people have done that before <laughs> not in this way <laughs> not in this way <laughs> I mean, god blimey <laughs> I think it's some of your best lyrics. Oh, I think thanks. I think Great Fire especially. It is it's that it's is it poetry set to music or is it just a song with words that sit and flow a certain way? The, the lyrics uh, and the music they're sort of poems in their own selves mm. but the fact that they're combined it sort of broadens the picture out in lots of different ways. You know, usually you only need the words to sort of get the colour, but fortunately um, we've got other tools on hand to do that musically as well. Drifters and Trawlers especially has got a rather nifty bass line. It's a beauty, that one. Well, I, I personally respond to what I hear and what evolves, and when I hear Simon's guitar, that throws up other ideas yeah I mean, regarding tony ellen tony, tony, just does, tony just does tony just does what he wants to do and you have to fit in around <laughs> him basically yes yeah we have this uh benedictine though it's not strictly benedictine it's it's it's, it's, it's not an order multi-denomination kind of um no it's not an order there's no orders <laughs> but uh simon is 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 referred to within our brotherhood as uh simon the silent talks quietly Says very little, carries a big, yes, a big yeah, axe. Exactly. Little but smells like a big one. <laughs> the 
idea of, of Englishness, which is obviously something you're going to get asked a lot about, it's also something that you have in common with both with, with The Clash and with many of the groups that you've been involved in. <laughs> This but mainly Blur. A lot of Blur, but yeah. also not just Blur. A, li- a lot of uh, Radiohead, Radiohead, a little bit of Blur and a Radiohead, <laughs> Radiohead, Radiohead, a little bit of Blur and a, ra- and a, a Radiohead. Oasis, <laughs> Oasis is uh, a song that uh, always <laughs> that is- gets sung to me when the, the people who tour with me, like, you know what I mean, it's funny. Waiting for you. That idea of Englishness, and by that I mean the self-deprecation and the humour and also the tradition, but also the inclusivity of the different music and culture that we have at our best, those are things that you have in common in all the music that you've done. Yeah, um, what I sort of find interesting about the records we've made is that it's like rock and roll did happen, but, but not really in terms of... I mean, when you say Englishness, mm. uh, what you're talking about is... I mean, what is Englishness today? Because we have people from many different cultures that live on this island. But it was always, and I suppose you refer to The Clash, was to sort of sing our songs, English songs, really, rather than an Americanization of music. And I suppose we've bypassed rock and roll in some ways. Simon Tong is definitely, to, in my mind, the sort of Joe Meek of the guitar, of, the, uh, yeah, of that tradition of sound and atmosphere and for me personally I work really well with that you call it modern folk music there is a very broad range musically on this and it doesn't it doesn't nod a lot to rock and roll does it? It doesn't nod to well, pop. Just, 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 <laughs> not, not really. I mean, I, I, you know, there's, there's still a little bit of rock and roll in this all. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'll, fa- I'll, fa- but, I'll, I'll have you know. Thank you very much. But, um, <laughs> but our, our focus was elsewhere, really. Uh, we didn't particularly feel the music needed power chords, and that's not really what Simon does. And so, yeah, it was very organic sound that came together without any pre-thought, oh, it would be like this or that. It's just happened naturally. Uh, and I guess in so far as um, Tony the Absconti... Uh, <laughs> 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 no, Tony Visconti. <laughs> he, he was like, he was, he was great because he sat back and said, yeah, I'm here to help you make the yeah. records you want to make rather than putting his foot down or any leaving any he handprint. Like, he was like the Admiral of the fleet. And he's that spithead. You know what happened there, don't you? They had a mutiny. Anyway, there wasn't a mutiny. (laughs) You're always going to be on the ship that's going to have a mutiny. I mean, that's (laughs) part of who you are, isn't it? Um, there's that. There, there's the it's not mu- a good party unless there's been a mutiny. <laughs> what the Billy Bad of rock and roll? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the questions about Brexit are going to be inescapable with this record if you choose you to talk so? a lot about it. What do you think? <laughs> well, whatever record or whatever's, we've all got no choice in the matter. Yeah. So. Exactly. I mean, yeah, of course, people are going to mention that. Yeah, yeah. but then you're just, you're just ignoring the, the the elephant in the room. I mean, that's, you know, it's like needs to be talked about. Is it a farewell? Is it a goodbye to a certain a certain type of Englishness? Well, it's, 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 is goodbye farewell, is farewell goodbye, is forever, forever, you know what I mean? What, 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 what are these words that we carry with us? But goodbye could also mean goodbye and I'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just a permanent goodbye. You know, and I, and it's more like leaving, really. It's, there's, it's a leaving record. But it is enormously affectionate, even when you're jumping in different yeah, but times. It doesn't, it, it doesn't come and say who's leaving. <laughs> it's impossible to separate English identity without thinking about what's happening now and how a separation for the U- a potential separation from the European Union is going to affect what people, what we think about as being English and what the rest of the world thinks about as being English, which are clearly things I say you're very proud and very affectionate of... I just, I just don't, don't agree with this idea that there... The, there was ever a mandate. A mandate to me is something which is a clear instru- clear instruction from the people to follow a new 
you know, way. But we didn't get a mandate, so that's why we're in such a mess. It's very ambiguous, to say the least. As and was the campaign leading up was, to as it. As was the campaign leading up to it. So, you know, it's just not right that we don't have another discussion about it. But in, inevitably, when whether it's a relationship, when someone is kind of sort of too anxious to get something passed through, there's something else afoot. And I just think we should all be really honest with each other and everyone should be able to listen to each other, not call each other names, be actually English. Because let's face it, it is really an English problem. I mean, the, the Welsh didn't, don't want to leave, the Scots don't want to leave. It's very much something that's within the psyche of England. Yeah, it's, it made me feel very emotional and, and, and kind of, you know, sort of slightly despondent on occasions, hence my name within our uh, non-denominational Benedictine non-order. My name is Damon the Despondent. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> we cheer on the clowns as they roll into town But their faces look tired and sad to me And carry the terrible things they've seen Phenomenal.